So how do we add and subtract with negative numbers? Adding and subtracting with positive neg numbers is fine. We've been doing that since first grade, essentially. But uh, so let, let's look at some of our rules here. Because adding and subtracting with negative does get confusing. If you look at the, our, our number line here, ignore, ignore this part and this part right now. Just look at the top. If you add a positive on a number line, you would increase. And if you subtract a positive, you would decrease because you're taking away. And that's what we're used to doing. That's what we've been doing uh, the majority of our life. And then we figure out that there's negative numbers. And this is the rule that we discovered in class, is that if I add a negative, that actually takes away from my positives, it takes away from the value that I have, and so it decreases me. It moves me towards uh, the negative side, and then further from zero once I cross zero. And then subtracting a negative actually takes negative values away, so it's kind of like adding positives to my value, and so I actually increase. So we have this rule here of adding a positive really is the same thing as subtracting a negative. And then subtracting a positive is the same thing as adding a negative. So let's look at our next uh, example of how we see this. So let's, let's talk about, first of all, how these chips work. Red chips are negative chips. Black chips are positive chips. And we get this from the classic accounting. To be in the red would be you're in debt. And if you're in the black, it means you're good. You've made some profit. You're OK. You're staying afloat. You're above zero if you're in the black. So if I have one black chip, I have a value of positive 1. If I have one red chip, I have a value of negative 1. That's how we're working this. Now, let's put these two together. I have a positive one and a negative one. What do I basically have here? If I had a negative one dollar bill, if there was such a thing, say I owed somebody a dollar, but I had a dollar in my pocket. I know I owe this guy a buck, but I've got one in my pocket. What do I really have? I basically have nothing. Because I'm going to have to pay him off, and then he's paid off, and I have nothing left. Okay, so we broke even. So for every one black positive, I only have one red negative, that's a zero. That's adding a zero. So let's do this. I owe two dollars and I have two dollars in my pocket. I still have nothing. And if I do this, okay, now I have three black chips, two red chips. I owe two dollars, but I have three in my pocket. I basically get to keep a dollar of that. So my value here is positive one. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So let's let's practice a couple uh, math problems, and we'll see how we do here. Let's say we have five minus two. Okay, there's a couple ways we could show this. We just said that subtracting a positive is basically what we have here is a positive is the same thing as five plus negative two. So we'll show both methods here. First of all, five. I have to start with five. So I've got five black chips. And I'm going to take two away. OK? Done. There's three. Or I have five, and I add negative two. So what number now do I see? Well, these guys go over here because they get canceled out by the reds. And I'm left with positive 3. OK? So a simple example. Let's try another one. Let's go with 5 minus 7. And again, this is minus a positive. So I can do 5 plus negative 7 if I wanted to. So we'll look at both sides of it. 5 minus 7. OK, I have five black chips, but I need to take away seven. I don't have seven black chips, so what's my solution? Ah, remember, we can add zeros. We'll just call it adding zeros. 
got another black chip. I mean, I have another red chip, too. My value, my number, did not change. I still have positive 5 in my name. But I also have those two zeros up there. Now I can take away 7. If I take away all my black chips, I can see that I have negative 2. Let's add negative 7. So I start with 5. I got 5 bucks in my pocket. And the situation calls for me to add negative 7. I've already got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, if we pair them all up, they would cancel each other out. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 leaving me with 2, these two, here at negative 2. So 5 minus 7, or 5 plus negative 7, is negative 2. And then the last thing that I saw, a situation that really confuses a lot of people, is subtracting a negative. So let, let's look at this. Because that minus sign with a negative sign after it is nasty. We don't like it. So. get all these chips off the board, start with our clean slate. Let's start with, and we'll even start with a negative. Let's start with negative 3 minus negative 4. Okay, so negative 3, 2, 3, and I need to take away 4 negatives. I don't have four negatives, but if I remember, I can add a zero, and I now I have four negatives to take away. My value is still starting with negative three because of the canceling out thing. So now I can take away four, two, three, four, and I am left with positive one. And we also said that you know negative three is the same thing as adding a positive. So minus a, minus a negative, same thing as adding a positive 4. So let's do that. Let's start with our negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Then we'll add positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. They cancel each other out. I'm going to be left with one positive, positive 1. So hopefully that clears up the chip method. I know a lot of people abandon it. Uh, but it's very valuable. It's very valuable, especially with the smaller numbers and just to get the basic concept down. Let's look at the next, uh, some rules that we discovered. We said that adding the same signs, when adding the same signs, you keep the same sign. So positive plus a positive is going to be a positive. Or a minus, or a, ne a negative plus a negative is going to be even more negative. So I'm going to keep that negative. And whether I'm going the positive direction or the negative direction, I'm still going further from zero. Adding opposite signs, if I have a positive plus a negative or a negative plus a positive, doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter there. I keep the sign of the bigger integer. So if I have 5 plus a negative 7, I know I'm going to have a negative left over because the negative number is bigger. And then on this situation, I'm going to actually get closer to zero. Okay, so if you can remember that, remember that. If you don't like these rules, then just forget them. But find something that you like. The next rules that we came up with was when subtracting with the same signs, if I take away more than what I started with, it will be negative. Now, in this example, remember that negative 3 is greater than negative 4. It doesn't look like it would be but it's closer to zero, so it's going to be greater. So if I take, if I start with negative four, and I subtract a negative three, it's actually taking away more than what I started with, and that means that I'm going to be in the negative. And you can test that, work it out a couple different examples on your own. If I take away less than what I start with, it will be positive. And I think of this as if I've got 20 bucks in my pocket, Someone needs to take away 10 for me. That's less than what I started with, or taking away less than my 20. I still have some left over. Now, on the opposite side of that, like our first example, taking away more. If I have 20 bucks in my pocket, someone needs 25, 
Now I'm in the hole five bucks. So that's how I remember that rule. Subtracting opposite signs, keep the sign of the first number. So if I'm going to have a minus or a negative minus a positive or a positive minus a negative, that first number tells me what the sign is. And then from there, I can decide what I need to do. If I add the integers together or subtract them, whatever. So keep the sign of the first number. And we've called this Kelly's Rule because uh, a special person with the last name of Kelly discovered this uh, rule. So keep the sign of the first number. That's when subtracting opposite signs, Kelly's Rule. Uh, that concludes our video. Uh, remember, if you, even one last thing, I guess, is to remember the warring armies and the war cry when a positive is added to a negative, or when you're adding a negative or subtracting a positive, the opposites, they don't like each other. So they're going to decrease. But let's say the positive army crests the hill, and they see a positive army on the other side. They like each other. They're on the same side, so they're going to increase their numbers. The same with the negative. If the negative crosses the hill and they see a negative on the other side, they're going to join up forces and increase as well. So that's another way you can think of it. Uh, hopefully this helps and clears up some confusion. Check us out the rest of our videos on uh, YouTube at Ritman Math 7 or check us out on Facebook. Search Ritman 7th Grade Math. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this helps.